Hello my friends, this is your brother Hampton from Hybrid Calisthenics. Welcome back to another episode of Coffee with Hampton where I sit down and share some thoughts with you over a cup of coffee. We're back after a brief hiatus, both of Coffee with Hampton and also just some videos on the channel. I recently got married and I took a break for a couple of weeks and I'm really happy to be back. And I get a lot of requests for a fitness channel for more Coffee with Hamptons. I, see, I hear people saying, why did you stop doing these? I didn't stop doing them. I just wanted to focus on fitness content for a little while. But I want to talk about a question that I've been getting a lot. A lot of members of our community have been asking me how to deal with loneliness. So what do we do if we feel lonely? How do we connect with other people? And I think with lockdown and everything else that's going on in the world right now, it can be very easy for us to feel isolated. Now, a logical follow-up question that some people might ask is, Hampton, this is a happy time in your life. You just got married. Why would you want to talk about loneliness now of all times as your return video? And that makes sense, but the First of all, it's not me that's feeling lonely. I always try to make my content about the community and what people want to know more about, what people want to hear. And a lot of people have been asking me for a while now about what to do with loneliness. So first of all, it's to serve other people. And second of all, I do think it might make sense here because I think a lot of us have realized by now that loneliness doesn't just come from not being around anyone else. Because you can be lonely and married you can be around a bunch of friends, a bunch of people, and still feel lonely. You can be around a tremendous amount of people and still feel lonely. I think a lot of people, unfortunately, have come to realize that loneliness can happen regardless of how many people are physically around you, but it can come if you don't feel connected with anyone. So that's an interesting topic that I can talk about right now, which is comparison. Now, I don't feel lonely right now, and I am blessed to have a lot of friends and family that I connect deeply with, so I am very thankful for that. But I have felt lonely in the past, and I remember one of the things I used to think when I was in that emotional state. Um, when One of the times when I first moved away from college, for example, I was in a new area, I didn't know anybody, and it seemed like a lot of people were doing better than I was. Even people who had just moved, I would see large gatherings, parties, and they would walk around with a lot of different friends and I would feel like, hmm, maybe there's something wrong with me. And I think that's a feeling that a lot of people can relate to, which is when you see other people who don't appear to be lonely, other people who seem to be doing better than you are, it's easy to think, well, maybe the problem is with me. It's not with the situation. Maybe there's something about me that I have to fix, but it's not necessarily the case, right? Even just now thinking of this and just laying out all the things that we already know, it's not necessarily the case because some people who are around a lot of people, some people who do go to a lot of parties and are dating someone or married or have kids are unfortunately not as happy as they seem, right? So just like with many other things, playing the comparison game as in comparing our loneliness to that of other people's can often just make things worse. And while that is unfortunate for them, I think that serves as a good reminder to us that we may not be as behind as we might think. Unfortunately, other people are suffering, but the silver lining of that is that we, you're not alone in this. We're not alone in this. Other people have the struggle too, even if they don't feel like it. And we can reach out to them or they can reach out to us and we can try to get better together. And the second thing that I'll mention is that it's probably not your fault. It's probably not entirely your fault if you feel lonely. By the way, this is all from my own experience. There's a lot of different causes for this. Obviously, please share your experience in the comments so that other people know your journey. Do you feel lonely now? Did you feel lonely in the past? And how did you get better? This is just my journey, my journey. And what I've come to realize is that for myself and with other people, I don't think it's really our fault. It's usually not because people are more isolated now, at least physically. Um, than they used to be, right? You can see because of technology with the internet and just like even transportation technology like cars and planes, stuff is built further apart now. In the past when we could only travel by horse or horse and buggy, we had to kind of put everything close together, right? That makes sense because if we went out to buy food or we needed something from a certain store and we only had like 30, 45 minutes, an hour to go and do that, then we couldn't put it like 300 miles away, or not that, but you know, like 50 miles away, that'd be inconvenient. It would take a while to get there. But stuff is further apart now, right? Because you can drive several miles in 15 minutes in your car, or you can take a train downtown, or you can take a bus downtown, and you can reach these areas 
in a similar amount of time as walking somewhere relatively close by, back when cars and electronic transportation didn't exist or wasn't as readily available. So with everything closer together, people had a higher chance of bumping into each other, um, a higher chance of random encounters, so to speak. And this is part of how we formed community and relationships in the past. Really, this has only changed in the past few generations, I think, with some exceptions in certain cultures, perhaps. But if you believe in soulmates, for example, I know this isn't, I know loneliness isn't necessarily about romantic connection, but let's just use soulmates as an example. If you believe in soulmates, your great, 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 great grandmother, she might have had to settle for whomever was in her village, right? If she meets Jack in New York, for example, and they connect, she can be like, oh, well, this is my soulmate because this is the person that I can reasonably find. Because it wouldn't be as likely for her to say, well, I don't think my soulmate is Jack because I haven't looked in Ireland yet or I haven't looked in Wisconsin yet for Isaac because Isaac's really my soulmate. So uh, back then, it almost sounds a little bit too cynical, but because people had fewer options or thought they had fewer options, then perhaps they were less choosy on who they interacted with because people do want interaction. Like it's been proven that humans are social. We do want to connect with other people. So if your horizons aren't as broad, then you meet someone that you kind of sort of like and you're like, oh, well, I'll make what I can of this. This is something that you often hear from older people um, regarding relationships as well, where they say, well, our relationship wasn't the best, but we had we had it and we decided to build on it. We worked on it together. We hear about this a lot. And sometimes people will say that young people nowadays, meaning my generation, um, are a little bit too fast to give up on someone. And they talk about this with relationships, but perhaps it might also apply to friendships and just our acquaintances and people who we talk to as well. <laughs> and it's funny because these same people will sometimes complain about stuff and people being further apart nowadays. like back in their day, whenever that is, their sister, when they got married, might only move a few blocks down. But now because transportation is more readily available, um, she can move several states away. And it would really be the same, not the same physical distance, but the same time distance, so to speak, as in traveling to meet them would take the same time now, even if they're further apart. So people are choosier now because they seem to have more options with just about everything. But this is not necessarily bad because it's not just about other people choosing you, but you can choose other people. And the benefit of the expansion of everything and the accessibility of everything is that we now have the ability to choose with greater specification. For example, if you want friends in a new hobby you have, let's say you picked up soccer, or let's find something a little bit more niche, let's say squash. You just picked up squash and you want to find friends and other people to talk about. You're really into it. Let's say you're really into the game and you're not playing casually, but you want to know techniques, you want to know training regimens, you want to know the history of the sport. Well, now you can go on like Facebook groups and f look up squash group and you can find a lot of different options for people who talk about squash. And if you want to find something local, you can say squash group. Louisiana, and you might be able to find someone local that you can meet up with, obviously be careful, but you can find some people and some groups and some clubs, so to speak, catered to your desires. So while it might seem harder to make friends, especially with lockdown and everything that's going on right now, and with people being further apart and they're less likely to settle, that is a downside, yes, but you can also choose people within your framework. You can also go out and find different people to connect with based on your interests. So with everything that's going on nowadays with lockdown and people being further apart, yes, people are less likely to settle in terms of who they hang out with, but you also have more choices as well. You can also reach other people. If this was 300 years ago, yes, Sally, your next door neighbor might be forced to be friends with you partially to survive, but you might have a best friend thousands of miles away in a different country that you might never have met if it weren't for the internet or even even mail back when that was a thing and people used to find pen pals and stuff you now have the ability to discover close friends that you wouldn't have had countries and just like leagues away so there is that there is this opportunity and while the modern day often brings about this vibe to some people of well everything's getting worse everything's getting worse look how people are not talking as much 
Some of that might have some validity, but there's also a lot of good things that are hard to deny. So to summarize my point and kind of bring it to a landing, if you're lonely and you're feeling isolated, it's likely not your fault, or at least likely not entirely your fault. But because of how things are now, you can kind of play a volume game. And to elaborate and kind of sort out what I mean, I think a good example is content, is what I do. I don't know how many people will watch this video after I upload it, but let's say 50,000, 70,000, even a couple hundred thousand, or even a couple of million, which is unusual for these kinds of videos, that's still a very, very, very small percentage of the whole world, right? But the people who do watch it, hopefully enjoy it and hopefully benefit from it. And to go off that, I've made a lot of friends from doing these videos. I've made a lot of connections in our wonderful community on like Discord and Cultivate, go check them out, that I otherwise wouldn't have ever met if I didn't put myself out there and start making these videos. Now, obviously not everyone has to make videos, but again, you can reach out to people, you can find these groups. It's really a numbers game, I would say, because I think as I quoted some numbers earlier, I don't know anybody who deeply knows 200,000 friends right now. There might be someone out there and congratulations to you because that sounds uh, like a hard task, but you can only hang out with so many people. Right? When we talk about loneliness and we talked at the beginning of the video about people hanging out in huge groups and I'm like, oh, well, I only have one or two friends. <laughs> you can only hang out with so many people at once, right? And I think a lot of people who do feel isolated in these groups, who have a huge friend group and still feel lonely, will tell you that they might trade that. They might trade their entire friend group of hundreds or thousands for one or two good friends, for five or six close friends in a group. And it's really not even that many. Because yes, while I no longer feel lonely at the moment and I'm blessed with a lot of good friends, I've been a loner most of my life, including now. I spend a lot of time just by myself. Like right now, there's no cameraman, there's nobody around me. I'm just talking to the camera right now. And that's kind of just how I thrive. I know not everyone's like that, but I kind of enjoy being able to focus on my work, being able to focus on my passion projects. I can tell you that the difference between doing what I'm doing now and having nobody, having nobody is tremendous. The difference between having nobody to talk to and having one person to talk to is big. And I'm bringing that up so we can have some kind of expectation because when I talk about finding these groups for squash or basketball or yoga, whatever you like, and you're finding these groups of like-minded people that you can chat with, I'm not talking about making a hundred friends, a thousand friends, or having all these people come to your funeral. <laughs> uh, all you really need to feel less lonely, in my opinion, is one good friend, uh, at least for me, at least for me. And while I'm talking about myself, I'll say that what I enjoy doing, what I found that I like doing, is having someone to talk to about what I'm doing throughout the day. Somewhere in my early 20s, late teens, I realized that I want someone to text when I'm going to the grocery store. When I text, when I'm going um, to buy milk, I'm like, hey, you're back buying milk, or just got here. They don't have the milk I want. I, I don't know why, <laughs> it just feels nice. And it, Twitter's not the same. It, it's not the same as Twitter. I know that people use Twitter for that, but I like being able to text someone throughout the day, even just about small stuff like that. Right now, I do it in our Discord. I do it in our Discord. I'm the most active member there, or I have the most messages. So. I bring that up not to promote it. I don't make any money from it, but some people are watching this and saying, well, I don't like squash. I don't like basketball. I don't like yoga. I don't have any real hobbies. Where'd I go? Well, part of what I'm doing is building a community. Part of what I'm doing through these videos is to build a community and Discord is one of the ways that people hang out. So here's the link for it. Check it out. And the last point I'll bring up because it's getting dark kind of quickly is the other side of the coin. It's something that I haven't mentioned yet because all these things I talked about so far, I've mentioned that it may not be your fault or it may not be our fault if we feel lonely. But the other side of the coin is that sometimes it is our fault. Sometimes it's not a numbers game. Sometimes we have interacted with a lot of people that could potentially be our friends, but there's something wrong with us or something about us that's not connecting with other people. It's not resonating with other people in a way that makes them want to hang out with us. And if that sounds harsh, it's not supposed to. I know some people came to this video expecting me to talk about self-love, self-respect, 
self-esteem regarding loneliness. And yes, all those things are very important, even if I didn't emphasize them in this video. But I do want to bring up the very realistic possibility that there might be something about us that's driving people away. And I think a good way to start this conversation is not thinking of ourselves, but thinking about someone that else that we found distasteful. A lot of us at some point in our lives have met someone that we found off-putting, either someone that wanted to date us or just someone that came up and said hi, and just the way they did it was kind of creepy, or someone that you got to know and they're actually very aggressive or they make jokes that you find in bad taste. And it's very easy to say, well, I don't want to hang out with this person. This person just isn't for me. Um, they're a jerk, so they deserve they don't deserve my company. I'm just gonna go over here. And that's fine, that's fine. And I, that's not necessarily a bad thing to do. We sometimes do need to walk away from people that we know we won't connect with and people who bring us down, obviously. But then there's the question of, you're probably not the only person to walk away from this person. If this, <laughs> if this person elicited a very strong reaction from you of aversion, you don't, want, you don't want to be around this person, you're probably not the only person to feel that way. So. Where do these people go if this routinely happens? If something about what they're doing, some, something about the way they come off is not working, where do they go? Well, they go a lot of different places, but one of the places that I know they do go is into our community sometimes. Sometimes these people email me. Unfortunately, I've observed that some people seem to have trouble fitting into almost any community where they approach people and they talk and they just don't seem to fit in. And I'll, I'll elaborate in a minute, but they eventually become aware of this. Eventually, uh, through social feedback, they become aware of this and they often ask me, they say, Hampton, why won't these people be my friend? Why don't these people wanna talk with me? Why won't they give me a compliment? Why don't people like me more and why don't people respect me more? And I know it sounds harsh, but no one owes you their affection and no one owes you their respect. And I'm not saying that's how things should be, but I do think that's how things are. Right? Because you don't have to be anyone else's friend, but they also don't have to be your friend. Even if you act like a good friend to them. This is what I've talked about before, about giving with expectation. If you give to someone, but you suddenly want something in return, then you're not really giving without expectation, you're giving with expectation. And if this resonates with you, if you're listening to this and you think, this is me, Hampton, this is me. I've talked with a lot of people and they just don't want me around. They seem to reject me. What can I do? Well, I do want to reiterate at this point that it may not be your fault. I know I've said this throughout the video and we've gotten to this point, but do consider that it might not be you. It might be you, but it also might not. It might just be like, for example, if you have certain political beliefs and your friends have all entirely different political beliefs, you're obviously going to argue about some things and you might go to a different area and be like, wow, everyone agrees with me. Everyone likes me. So just yet another example of how you can play a numbers game and it might not be you. But if you've considered this and you still think the problem is you, which is something that you have to decide because other people can kind of guess, but only you can really decide whether or not there's a need for particular self-improvement, then it's okay, is what I would say. None of us are perfect and most of us, when pressed and directly asked, will admit that we're not perfect. We're all working on ourselves. We're all on some path of self-improvement in some way. So it's okay. You're definitely not alone in there. And while these kind of videos often do talk about self-love and self-appreciation, I don't think that is separate from self-improvement. You can recognize that you deserve love, which I think you do. You can still love yourself and improve yourself at the same time. You can recognize that yes, I am a human and worthy of some level of respect and still realize that, wow, I have major flaws, maybe in how I treat other people that I need to work on. And there's many different ways to do this. This is expanding a huge topic that we can't really get into in this video, but there's a lot of different ways you can improve yourself and it's never too late for that. I don't think it's ever too late to start making some changes to improve yourself. Now, whether or not some people will forgive you for some of the things you've done is more up for debate. You never know, it depends on the situation. But again, there's a lot of people in the world, even if you've made permanent damage to some of your relationships with people based because of how you are. If you've done things that your friends and your acquaintances consider unforgivable and they won't ever talk with you because of that, 
And the good news is there's probably still millions and millions of people you haven't met yet and people you can interact with with their new and improved self. And these people who are out there will accept you for who you are and who you will become. And just to give a quick real example, so people don't think I'm being too mean and too harsh telling people that they might need to change themselves. There was a guy whose issue that he told me was, girls keep blocking me when I ask them for pictures of their hands. And I was a little bit confused. I always try to keep an open mind. So I said, wait, wait, are you an artist who draws hands? And he said, no. I said, is there, are you a medical professional who needs to see pictures of their hands? And he said, no. And I said, is there some reason why you need to see their hands? And do you know these women? And he said, no. He talks to people, he messages random girls on Instagram and wants to see pictures of their hands. And he gets blocked because of that. And I said, you should stop doing that. And he said, okay. So maybe that was a bit of an extreme example, but I just wanted something to illustrate what I meant. And if he actually stopped doing that, I don't know, I would consider that a step towards self-improvement. So that's about it. That's what I have for today. Again, this is a big topic. This is a big topic. There's a lot of different things we can talk about. So if you want to know more, please let me know in the comments. I'm happy to make more videos about this. Again, this is largely just from my own experience and perhaps some mistakes that I've made that I've learned from and now I'm trying to share what I've learned with you all. And the final thought I want to give is something that I've talked about a lot. And that is, I always try to think about other people. Whenever I feel sad, I try to cheer other people up because other people are feeling sad. Whenever I feel lonely, I know other people are feeling lonely. So I reach out and I try to cheer them up. And this is just sometimes people that I know on Facebook. When I'm scrolling through Facebook, and I see someone post a depressed comment. Um, I don't know if they have depression, but it's like a sad comment. They, they're like, my life is miserable. I'll reach out to them and I'll say, hey, you wanna meet up for coffee? You wanna meet up for dinner? Let me know if you wanna chat. And sometimes these people are not people I know all that well. And there's a chance sometimes that they don't really know me well enough and they're like, ah, that's okay, thanks. And maybe that they just wanna chat or maybe they just don't wanna talk at all. And that's fine, but I do that at scale. I do that with a lot of different people. And there are people that say, hey, yeah, I will take you up on that. I will have some coffee with you or I will chat with you. And as a result, we have a closer connection than we've had before. A lot of people, probably more than you think, are willing to talk. But it's like I've mentioned before, everyone in the world seems to have their hand out. But most people have their hand out like this. They're sitting down and they want their hand out like this because they want someone to place something in their hand. They want to take, they want to ask. And that's not necessarily bad. Sometimes we do need assistance. Sometimes we do need a hand and sometimes we do need help. But whenever possible, I say, when you can, be the person that has their hand out like this or like this. So you can give someone something or you can help them out. If you think about it as you standing on the highway and you need a ride, it's probably a lot harder and less likely for someone to stop by and give you a ride than it is if you're driving around and you offer someone else a ride. But either way, you're in a car together. I know that's not a perfect metaphor, but my hypothesis is that more people are willing to share a ride with you than you realize, regardless of how they get there. And remember, through all of this, you don't need to make a million friends. You don't need to make 100,000 friends. You don't need to make 10 friends. The biggest difference that helped my loneliness was the difference between zero and one. Having nobody to talk to and having one person to talk to can be a tremendous difference, much more than the difference between one and two, and it probably scales down from there. So I hope some of you having watched this content are inspired to find that one person that you can connect with in this community or elsewhere, <laughs> wherever you find them, I hope you can find someone to share this life with because that truly is a beautiful thing and human connection is in my opinion a very beautiful thing and i hope many of you can experience that or help others experience it so that's it that's what i have for you now this was coffee with hampton thank you so much for joining me for a cup of coffee i will drink now because if i don't drink there's always this theory that there's nothing in my cup it's almost always black coffee the cup is never empty if i'm waving it around it's usually because it's a little bit lower but the cup is never empty Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry if there's not enough Coffee with Hamptons. It's actually probably my, my most requested video series, so I'll do more of them, but I also do wanna make more fitness content. So I'm just gonna amp up the amount of content that I put out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful day, my friend.